We all hate confrontation, right? Can we all agree on this? Yes, we're all on the same webpage. We're all using the same Wi-Fi. The breeding ground for a lot of confrontation, for a lot of us, is that, can anybody guess it? Anybody? You with your hand up? Work. You got it. As some of you guys know, my last nine to five was me lifeguarding at the Hard Rock Hotel. <sighs> I worked at Hard Rock for five plus years. I'm about to tell y'all about a scenario that would happen and I would let it happen every single year. One day, I make up my mind that I'm gonna start conquering my fears. Confrontation was the first thing on the list that I decided I'm going to just not run from and embrace it and face it head on. If I have all these fears and I don't do anything about it, I'm just gonna live my life in fear. You secretly start to shift your behavior and your decisions to avoid this thing that you're afraid of. I make this decision during the summer, which is the busiest time for any lifeguard anywhere, even the lifeguards in Wisconsin. Hard Rock Hotel in Orlando is actually connected to Universal Studios. So we're walking distance from the parks. The problem that we started running into was guests would come out at the butt crack of dawn, lay out their towels, some sandcastle buckets, and maybe a shovel, and go off to the parks for eight hours. When enough people do this, at 12 o'clock noon, the people who are actually trying to jump in the pool come outside, no chairs or tables available, standing room only, and only four people are on the pool deck. That's a problem. We even have servers who walk around the pool deck and bring you food, drinks, whatever. One day I'm on the guard stand and your horror walks up to me and she says, I don't know how I'm gonna pay my bills this month. What you mean? Every day I come to work, there's nobody out here and there's nobody to serve. People come outside, they see there's no seats, they go back inside. Imagine walking into a restaurant like Chili's and every seat is taken with somebody's purse or just random crap scattered everywhere but the restaurant is empty and you can't sit down. That's the equivalent of what's going on right now. And I didn't think about it like that. So that little guy on my shoulder is like, remember you said you're gonna face confrontation. You don't really need to face confrontation. It's not really your job. You're just a lifeguard. I know in the back of my head that if I start moving people's towels, that's gonna lead to confrontation. Maybe I should take this up with Jimmy, our supervisor. So I go into the fitness center, that's where the office is. Here's the thing about Jimmy. Jimmy's so laid back, I'm pretty sure every day he comes into work, he's under the influence of something. Jimmy, people out here reserving seats, can't nobody sit down, servers can't get paid. What should we do? Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that's not even our department, bro. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. We're the ones that have to pick up towels. I think that falls into our department. Jimmy. Yeah. yeah. What do we do about these towels? Should I pick them up? Should I leave them there? What should I do? No, bro, don't even trip. <laughs> You're crazy, bro. Just watch the water. That's all you gotta do. But each day goes by, these servers going home broke. Every morning, I'm watching people come out, reserve like 10 chairs, lay all their crap out, and then leave. I'm watching these servers stand around, not getting any money for six, seven hours. I'm watching these guests come out. They can't sit nowhere. If you do something, it's gonna lead to confrontation, just so you know. I come up with this system. We had a problem with locals that would sneak onto our pool deck, so anybody that came onto the pool deck, you have to show your room key and we give you a wristband. I launched my whole plan with a clipboard. I didn't need the clipboard, but I know if I'm standing outside with a clipboard, I'm gonna look official. I grab a stack of these wristbands. First thing in the morning, nobody's in the pool, so I'm just standing out there, looking. I'll see a guest come outside, she starts laying down her stuff. Mm-hmm. You're staring at her. When we make eye contact, I'll look down and I'll write something and I'll look back at her. So we keep laying her stuff out. Now she's starting to look a little nervous. She'll walk inside. I walk over, I take the wristband, I write down the time, I write an arrow, and I write the number of chairs they reserved. And I tie that wristband to the chair. If they don't come back in 30 minutes, I'm taking all their stuff. This is gonna lead to confrontation. There was one lady that came out and reserved like seven chairs. She saw me writing stuff down and you could see her feeling a little uncomfortable. So as she starts walking inside, I start writing on the wristband. She comes back outside, um, what are you doing? Well, ma'am, we have a problem. People come out, reserve all these chairs, go over to the parks, and the people who actually come out here midday to swim have nowhere to put their stuff. I came out here yesterday and there was no chairs, so I figured I have to do what everybody else is doing. So if I come back here at two o'clock, you're gonna find me some chairs, right? Ma'am, I'll make sure there are chairs out here for you. Okay. Picks up all her stuff, goes inside. I'm timing everybody. I'm walking by, I'll check the times on the wristbands. Cool, it's been 45 minutes. Grab up everybody's stuff, put it in lost and found in the towel hut. The plan is working. Guests come outside to get in the pool. Their mom and dad have somewhere to sit. Servers can serve them. There's peace on earth. But then we get packed. 
and people from the parks start coming back and the reserved chairs and their personal items are gone and people are sitting in their spots. These guests start to get mad. They find the roamer. The roamer points the guest over to Jimmy. They go to Jimmy. I can see the confrontation coming. So now here comes a supervisor and this angry family. Uh, AT, did you, uh, did you, did you, did you move their stuff? Oh yeah, you came out at 7.30. Uh, uh, you laid out seven chairs. You walked back inside. Never saw you again. I put your stuff in Lost and Found. Why would you do that? Ma'am, if you leave your stuff intentionally or unintentionally, it's considered Lost and Found. Oh, that actually went better than I thought it was gonna go. But then a lot of guests started coming back and they all started wondering why they couldn't find their seats and they're all getting sent to Jimmy. There's one thing I didn't account for in my whole master plan. By two o'clock, we had a pile of lost and found in the towel hut. I didn't partition off people's stuff. It was just lost and found, Blech. I'm at the top of the slide and then I hear, Hey, uh, hey, AT, could you come to the towel hut, please? Uh, I'm at the top of the slide. I, I, sh I think the bump's coming through in like 15 minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm a need you to come right now, though. Um, I'm gonna send someone to cover you. We have a situation. I feel that anxiety just creeping up on me. I round the corner and I'm walking to the towel hut and I see this lady with her two kids. They all look peeved. Can I help you, ma'am? Yeah, I laid my stuff out and went inside for a few minutes and my stuff is gone and there's no chairs now. Uh, oh yeah, I remember you. You were sitting second row, right? Yes. Yeah, no, actually, um, you were gone for six hours and yeah, your stuff is over here. She's telling me what she left out and I hand her back her stuff and then I say, is there anything else? And I see this light bulb go off in her head. Yeah, I had this very expensive suntan lotion. Just the way she said it, I already knew she was lying. Okay, ma'am, can you describe or name the brand? I don't remember the brand, but it was in a brown bottle with a tan cap, and it was really expensive. So I'm digging through this pile. I dig through it twice. Well, ma'am, I don't see it. Is there a manager, like a general manager or somebody I can talk to? Next thing I know, I'm walking around the pool deck picking up towels. This lady and her kids are chilling in a cabana. These cabanas are like $125 for half a day. I put two and two together real quick. I know she complained to the GM that I lost her expensive mystery lotion and now she has a free cabana. This goes on for a few days. For the most part, everybody's happy. Word gets out, I, I even develop a nickname. The guests start calling me the Towel Nazi. It was going good for a little while. And then one day, the sun wasn't even up. I'm stalking the cabanas and I see this shadowy figure laying stuff out on like 15 chairs. What concerned me was the size of this silhouette. This dude, even in the dark, looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger times two. Bodybuilding competition type body. <laughs> well, this is how we die. You know what? I got this. I go over, right on the wristband. My hands are like shaking as I write this. You guys see this? I am sweating retelling this story. He laid out a bunch of personal items. Suntan lotion, headphones, barbecue grills. Had I not witnessed him lay that stuff out and then leave, I would have thought nobody is stupid enough to lay all this stuff out here. So that made this whole situation the perfect storm for confrontation. He's not gonna come up and be like, oh man, my stuff is gone, oh well. I know that's not how this is gonna go down. I give him a little bit extra time. I give him like an hour and I don't see this dude, so I pick up all of his towels. I'm on the guard stand and then I start thinking, maybe three o'clock will come, my shift will be over and I can leave before Arnold Schwarzenegger gets back and kills me. There's a clock on the side of the building and I'm just eyeballing that second hand, waiting for three, it's like 2.30. I'm like, come on baby, come on baby, come on please. I'm almost there, please. Guess who comes strolling out. He sees that his whole row is occupied with other people. Hey, hey mom, um, I just wanted to call and say I love you. I'm totally not in any danger at all, whatsoever, even remotely. I saw the lifeguards look at him and they look at me and they're ready for a show. I see this guy and his family disappear into the towel hut. <laughs> Yo, AT, we have a situation. <laughs> oh, man. Hello? Yo, what's up? We have a situation? We do. You just called and said we had a situation. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, you better come to the towel hut. Yo, Aaron, Aaron, can you bump AT? He about to die. <laughs> Aaron bumps me, walk over to the towel hut. Now, I turn the corner and I see this dude and the first thing I notice is he has what looks like bear claws on his back. How did he get those? I don't know, but this guy seems like, <laughs> like he's very aggressive. He turns around. <laughs> I'm coming to my stuff and it's not here. Did you move my stuff? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yes sir, I did. What? What possessed you? What do you think those are my belongings? You want to see collateral damage? I'll give you collateral damage. I will terminate you now. And this guy is just popping off. Still sweating, by the way. It's, I think it's getting, the, yeah, it's getting bigger. When somebody talks to you like you're a dog, that's embarrassing. Amplify that by a whole pool deck of people looking at you. I look up, everybody in the hotel is pressed up against their window looking down at me. The housekeeping ladies are looking down over the balcony. In my head, I'm thinking, this dude's about to swing on me. Okay, Adonde, you need to know what you're gonna do. And I make up my mind, I will sit here and take everything this guy's about to give me unless he swings on me. So anything below that line, we good. I will sit here and I will take it. It's just embarrassing. He's in the wrong. I'm in the right. He's just going off because he's not getting his way. So he finishes. You think that's the end of the story and we're done. No, 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 no. Hey, hold up, yo, uh, AT, you moved her stuff too, bro. Why, Lord? Yes, ma'am, what can I do for you? Um, you moved some of my stuff too. Okay, I walk into the towel hut, go to the lost and found. What did I move of yours? Um, I had a bracelet. You left a bracelet out here. Yes, the sharks can smell blood in the water now. I didn't pick up any bracelet. Since you're going around picking up everybody's stuff, this is kind of your responsibility. I want to talk to your manager's manager right now. Jimmy comes back out with Mark. This is how she starts off her sentence. Yes, I work for the New York Times. And this man here lost my bracelet. She just smelt free, so she decided to jump on it. She got a cabana for the rest of the week. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. If I had to do this all over again, I would do the same thing. Because guess who got employee of the month and with employee of the month you get a thousand dollar check and when you win employee of the month you get entered in for employee of the quarter guess who won employee of the quarter but you get another thousand dollar check and when you win employee of the quarter you get nominated for employee of the year i didn't win employee of the year my acceptance speech for employee of the quarter i tried to be humble but it just came out as like bragging. If you have a fear that you're currently dealing with, just face it head on. Me stepping up and facing my fears, put an extra $2,000 in my pocket. And considering I was making $11,000 a year as a lifeguard, that helped out a lot.